Hello, my name is Bernard Tobi. Welcome to the Dream Big series. This program gives us children the opportunity to interview adults who are our heroes and heroines. We ask them to share their success stories with us so that we can also be inspired to aspire to become successful. Our special guest on this edition of the Dream Big series is Mrs. Unity Acel, but we we'll call her Grandma Unity. She was a poultry farmer, a pillar of the Ghana Poultry Farmers Association, and a member of the Veterinary Council. She was the CEO of the Ivan Lip Farms. Please come with me to meet Grandma Unity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grandma Unity, for agreeing to have a conversation with us. Please tell us what drives you. Growing up was very difficult. And under those conditions, even though a child, I vowed to make it work and become somebody who can influence children when I grow up so that they will know how to manage themselves, especially children that have lost either one or both parents. Who are your parents and where were you born? My father was the late Mr. Robert Clifford Labisian and my mother, Mrs. Felicia Labisian, both deceased. I was born in Accra, the Kolibu Hospital. How was it like for you growing up? Mom died at age three. We were then eight. The senior was then 12 years, and the smallest, the last one, was six months. So, so our grandma had to take care of us. So daddy married second wife, and there began our woes. Because grand, uh, our stepmother brought into the family her own children. So we were a large family and it was a lot of hard work. Hard work in that my uh, stepmom had a big provision store, a clothing shop, and a big restaurant. Restaurants. And I had to move around these setups and had to hawk every morning and after school. This made schoolwork very difficult. But I decided to move on and make it. Since all eight of us were always supporting each other. As a child, what did you dream about and have any of those dreams led you here? I dream of becoming a big lady lawyer. But that dream never came on. Oh. I became a trained teacher and I taught started with children and because I have the love of children I thought I'd go to my area. But when I started having children I saw that I wanted to be there for them. So I taught for seven years and asked for steady leave to stay home and look after the children for a season. What made you want to start your own business? We had a small backyard poultry here, so I decided to expand it. We had only 20 local beds, so I got rid of them, brought in 100 day old poultry beds. And I kept on increasing till they got to 500. And because we were selling, money was coming in and comparing my full time salary to what was coming in and me having enough time with the children, I decided to resign from teaching and concentrate on the poetry and have proper attention for the four children that God has given us. What are the skills needed to be a successful farmer? You really need to learn the theory and the practical aspect of poultry keeping. It is an intensive work. The birds, they have life in them. 
So if you don't take proper care, you lose, you lose them. So before I became a big time farmer, I had to read a lot of poetry books. I had to attend workshops, visit other big time farm, farms to have on the spot training. I really should have gone to school, but I thought I've got a lot of practical exposure. So instead, I did management so that I could manage the farm well because it was expanding quickly. And when it started expanding, we moved it from here to outside Accra so that expansion can go on. How is your typical day like? I get up around 4 a.m. then when the work was really going on. After my quiet time, I prepare the children's breakfast, lunch, and snack for school, and we all live here around 7 a.m. And I drop the children at school, we had then one family car, and then drop daddy at work. Then I go to the poultry office, do what I have to move to a feed mill, another establishment. Most of the time there were meetings with the government and other bodies trying to get input for the best. From there I have to go to the farm which is about 20 miles from here. I drive there, do what I have to do, come back, pick the children, bring them home, give them supper, and write to daddy's office to bring him home. What is your greatest fear and how do you manage that fear? I hate seeing the birds dying. The little carelessness, if your farm workers don't practice proper management skills, you can lose all your stock and then you get a big debt on your head. So it was the biggest fear that I should be careful not to have disease on the farm. So I should teach them good management practices and teach them on the farm how to do vaccination and all other things that goes into proper poultry keeping. So that I manage fear by educating people around. So. What was your favorite aspect of being a poultry farmer? I like serving other people. So when I entered the industry, I told myself I have to excel and then help change some of the uh, rules and regulations within the poultry industry, both with us, the farmers and the government. So some of us, came around and formed the first Poetry Farmers Association in 1979, of which I became the second chairperson. And trying to have everything in a nutshell, we thought we had to bring the other players in the industry, the drug houses, the feed millers, so we formed the committee on poetry in all the ten readings of Ghana. Then we move on to form the National Poetry Committee. The reason I was the first chairman in the Greater Accra region and the National, I became the treasurer. And because my mission is to save and make others happy, uh, when government set up Veterinary Council, the farmers made me represent them. So in a nutshell, the aspect of building the industry to a state that we will all enjoy and uh, consumers will also have healthy bears. I think it was getting nearer and I felt fulfilled. What were the challenges you faced as a commercial poultry farmer and how did you deal with them? Since most of the products, the inputs like maize, drugs, we import them. 
And during our time, you have to get import licenses before you can get this. So we, because we are now a team, we have association. If you are alone, it's difficult, but a team, you can fight your way out. So we were able to get import licenses to import our own things, money to get our deals and other additives as a group. And we went on to see how best we could get our products on the market. You know, during those period and now, a lot of competition on the market. Instead of eating somebody's rejected poultry that was not bought in the shop, and they mean to use it for their animals, come here and all of us enjoy it because the local ones are expensive. But by and by, there will be a change. You are a member of many associations. Could you please briefly tell us about them? If we come to the social side, I always want to see people smile. And uh, I decided if I have time, I will join social club. And the one of the clubs that I joined and I'm still in is called Sorot Mix International Club of Accra. We are a service club, mostly serving women and children. And we operate under six program areas, education, health, environment, international goodwill and understanding, and a lot. And the education, you know that education is crucial. So you have to start from the basics. So the first thing that we did was to build a nursery at Tabokubi so that the villages there, there are about six villages that must study, can send their children to the nursery before starting kindergarten and continuing. Mm -hmm. Then we, one of our members was a lecturer at Legon and uh, they started taking in blind students. They had problems, so we came together built a braille library within the BAM library and stock it with books on the subjects that they were offering in the university. And we were encouraged because one of them came out with first class. So we couldn't stop there. And so we had a daughter that we picked from the street, a blind young daughter at five. We took to Ukwapima School for the Blind. She was getting to SS. So we rise to Ukwapima Senior Secondary School, where they have started uh, receiving blind students. And we there, we wanted our daughter to be comfortable with all equipment. So we built a Braille library, giving them the necessary Brailles and all the necessary bridge sheets and yeah, other machines that will make learning easy for the students. How and where do you find inspirations? I get it from the good book, the Bible. So I read the Bible daily, meditate on it, and pray a lot. And one of the Bible lift ups that Jesus the master when he came down he was speaking in parables and one of the parables that is so loaded is the parable of the talents Matthew 25 verses 14 to 31 the master when traveling gave one of the helpers five bags of silver, the other two bags, and the other one. The two that got five and two set out to work immediately. They set up businesses, employed people, so that the businesses will grow and expand. 
and he did. And as the money was coming in, they started to reinvest the money and to bank some of them and to also continue to expand whichever or whatever work they were doing. Till on and now the master came back. They were able to give 100% more of the money given to them. The lazy one said he buried his bag of silver and gave nothing to the master. And you know the end, the master said he should give what was given to him to the serious one. This tells us that everybody has to work. Have to work. The Bible says he who will not work the same let him not eat. And so looking around, if somebody is in need, I think it's our duty to train the person to work instead of dashing them one CD here and not. That will never help. Aside the Bible, what are the other books you read and why? I read a, a wide range of books. Some on the work that I was doing, I still read them. Some for relaxation, some to add more knowledge because education never ends and it's not in the classroom alone that we have to learn. So I read. And also my grandchildren, I read so that we can sit down, share ideas from their books and tell them stories. They also read to me. Who has influenced you the most? My dear father. He taught us to be responsible, hardworking, truthful, not to be envious of anyone, but to try and achieve greatness by the input that God has put in us, our talents, our gifts, we have to manage them well so that we become our true selves but not borrowed selves. He instilled discipline in us in such a beautiful way that you will not see that he wants you to do something. You do it smiling. He instilled in us the discipline of keeping wherever you go very neat and tidy beautifying it with flowers. He says that flowers talk. And when you are down, you can just go and stand in your garden and meditate with them. He was a very good motivator, an advisor. He was indeed my friend, and we loved him. Please describe in one brief sentence how you imagine a better world for children. I want to see a world where children are not forced to make difficult choices like working on cocoa farms, fishing, working on the quarry, and hawking around. But instead, I want to see a world where the children learn and play in a safe and healthy environment so that they will grow to become God-fearing, hard-working, respectful, and responsible citizens. Could you please tell us a story that has made an impact on you? My story may be it's based around forgiveness. He who forgives heals himself and even heals those who had wanted to harm or destroy him. You win your freedom and you have your peace of mind. Uh, the life story of Nelson Mandela ranks high among the many 
great men stories that I have read. That is, you can achieve greatness by being humble. You should not blur your judgments by bearing unnecessary grudges or have a desire to revenge even when you think you've been cut off from the world completely in a small prison cell, you can still make a difference in your life, in the life of your family, neighbors, country, church, and the world at last. Thank you very much, Grandma Unity for talking to us about yourself and your contributions to the poultry industry in Ghana. We are grateful to you also for sharing an interesting story with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. I am Bernard Toby. Thanks for making a date with us on the Dream Big series. I have enjoyed our conversation with Grandma Unity ASL and I hope you have too. Until we meet again on the Dream Big series, let's continue to dream big. Bye.